In 1999, the government of Mauritius commissioned the construction of a long sea sewerage outfall for the wastewater authority in the capital, Port Louis. Essentially, the project will diffuse treated wastewater 1,500 meters offshore into deep ocean water to disperse in the sea currents flowing past the island. In total, the project will create almost 3.5 kilometers of trenched pipeline through residential, lagoon, and deep sea terrains. Jan de Null, a Belgian engineering company, is appointed as the main contractor for the multi-million dollar project at Tombo Bay. Construction of the pipeline will be in phases. In the lagoon section, a trench will be excavated to a minimum depth of 3.5 meters and excavated material will be used to create a bund extending in parallel to the trench. Sandbags will be placed to level the pipe sections in line with the 1 in 300 gradient through the lagoon. The trench will subsequently be backfilled with gravel and excavated material from the bund to return the lagoon to its natural state. In the deep water phase, the trench will be dredged up to 4 meters deep down a gradient of 1 in 37 and will entail the construction of a bedding layer, sandbag leveling and gravel backfill similar to the lagoon. In the final section, diffusion of treated waste over a distance of 132 meters will be achieved using 22 equally spaced riser pipes protected within concrete diffuser domes, alternately facing north and south. Finally, the entire section will be covered in a heavy backfill material. A thorough topographical and underwater film survey of the terrain was undertaken over the 600 meter lagoon area before construction began, a combination of traditional land survey methods and bathymetric equipment being used. As with the lagoon, the entire 900 meter length of the deep ocean seabed was also surveyed using bathymetric technology and underwater film. Environmental considerations were of major importance, in particular the impact of construction work on the marine ecosystem and topography were priority issues. It is anticipated that the project will greatly improve the quality of water in the lagoon areas around the capital Port Louis which had become increasingly polluted as existing shorter pipelines proved unable to cope with increased volumes of waste. Funding for the project was forthcoming from the government of Mauritius, the European Investment Bank and the Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau with Gilb Mauritius appointed as consulting engineers. The construction of almost two kilometers of pipeline on land passing through residential areas required the excavation of rocky basalt lava. The trench was excavated using local heavy plant and equipment and the 22 meter sections of pipe were easily maneuvered into place. Precise alignment of the sections of pipe were also problem free due to the gentle slope on land and ease of access along the route which enabled work to progress swiftly. Thus, with the arrival of the pipeline near the shore, the first stage of construction reached completion and the marine phases commenced. The difficulties of working offshore were to pose significant engineering challenges, which Jan de Null was well placed to handle.
In the lagoon, in order to minimize the impact on aquatic life, it was important to excavate the trench rapidly. To achieve this, land-based hydraulic excavators were brought in. Simultaneously, the excavated earth was compacted to create a bund in parallel to the trench to serve as an access road for the pipe laying. In open water, the giant dredger Marco Polo was able to excavate prodigious quantities of soil and rock, reducing dredging time from weeks to a matter of five days. Maintaining good management of the project was instrumental in the success of the whole endeavor. Supplies such as sandbags, pipes and backfill material to the working boats was an ongoing operation and forward planning a strategic necessity. Working in tandem with its partnership, the Pompeii proved an ideal platform to support dredging operations. Over and above this, the vessel provided storage for pipes, heavy lifting equipment and functioned as the nerve center for pipe laying operations. Although in principle a site stone dumping vessel, including a backfill storage facility, the Pompeii was able to deposit material according to the type of backfill required. The onboard storage of pipes enabled the construction team to work in conjunction with a fully equipped diving centre and the pipe laying was able to accompany the trench as it progressed seaward. The role of the 22-man diving team was pivotal in achieving a rapid deployment of the pipeline in sections. Divers worked in round-the-clock shifts, constantly enduring long decompression stops. Diving at these depths was limited to less than one hour of bottom time. Therefore, precision workmanship and good planning were essential if the project was to be completed on schedule. The 1.2 meter diameter glass fiber reinforced pipe technology used in the project is the first of its type in the world and divers accompanied each section of pipe into the depths, ensuring safe transit below. After taking a position above the bedding location, divers used buoyancy balloons to achieve a state of almost weightlessness for each pipe section, allowing them to maneuver the pipe ends together.
The final docking and positioning of the pipe was an exercise in precision fitting. Once in place, the sections of pipe were drawn together manually with the aid of tightening bolts attached to collars at the pipe ends. Each new section of pipe was ratcheted into the existing section with the aid of silicon grease in the joint area, where a rubber flange sealer was compressed within the joint through the tightening process. And finally, a mild steel clamp was placed externally around the joint, improving rigidity of the seal. Working to fine engineering tolerances of between 15 and 35 millimeters at the joint, divers would then film each joint from within the pipe for proof of accuracy of fitting. The high standards of professionalism all round were clearly in evidence as the project succeeded in maintaining deadlines as well as quality control targets. The final 132 meters of pipe entailed the construction of a series of 22 individual diffusion points spaced evenly 6 meters apart. The construction procedure required the installation of a protective housing known as a diffuser dome. The diffuser domes, pyramidal in shape and weighing 14 tons, were craned into position over the main pipe and placed on support frames over the main pipeline.
A vertical riser pipe was inserted from above through a one meter square opening and joined to the main pipe by a diver working within the dome. The diameter of the main pipe was designed to taper gently in proportion to the increased diameter of each subsequent riser pipe. This was designed to equalize the pressure and facilitate an even diffusion over the whole 132 meters. The entire deep water section, though posing the greatest difficulty of the entire project, was completed in a staggering time of only two months, due to excellent planning and organization, and represented a substantial maritime engineering achievement by Jan de Null in the open waters of the Indian Ocean.